Hi everybody. Today we're going to be talking about metals. This is a chapter in Bill Matten's book called Tataku, Percussion for Music Therapy. We're going to start with the cowbell. I'm sure you've all seen the standard cowbell beat by Will Ferrell on something like the Grim Reaper. Um, here's a smaller cowbell that's got a nice piece of plastic attached to it. I like this because uh, it chews your sticks up less when you're striking it. Uh, if you just hold the cowbell like this, it's going to ring a little bit. If I use a different one that uh, has a little bit more resonance, you'll really hear it ring. You can hear they come in different pitches, different sizes. All right, and here's an even larger one. I guess larger doesn't necessarily mean lower in pitch. So, uh, one of the basic beats is just to play quarter notes, um, as in more cowbell. And here we have, uh, I have a stick that I put some moleskin on to make it a little bit quieter. So you just heard a regular drumstick, which is a pretty sharp sound. Uh, if you use a wrapped stick, it'll be a little bit quieter. And then you can play on the um, mouth of it or the center. You can go back and forth. You can play just steady quarter notes here. So that would be unmuted. This is muted. And then the standard beat, which you could use to accompany maybe rock or some Latin tunes, would just be steady quarter notes here on the mouth. One, two, three, four. I prefer to keep it muted for that because it really makes the rhythms a lot more clear. Remember that out of all the different types of percussion uh, instruments, you know, things made out of um, skin or wood or shakers, that the metal instruments are the loudest. So you have to be careful to um, just keep that in mind when you're working an ensemble that the metal sounds don't uh, get too loud for the whole ensemble. Uh, you also want to make sure to give the metal instrument to the person that really has a good steady beat. So you can see that cowbells come in different sizes. Right here is something I would recommend. This is a mounting bracket. So if you uh, want to be able to play the bell but without holding it, you can mount it on something like this. So here's a large cowbell with that plastic edge. Here's a smaller cowbell that rings a little more called the salsa. And another metal instrument we're going to get to later. This is a splash cymbal. So besides the, uh, the quarter note pulse, we have some other rhythms that you can play. One is called a campana or campagna. Um, and if you're looking at Tataku, it's on page 123. So this is the bongo bell pattern, and it's a quarter, two eighths, quarter, and two eighths. You could think about it as low and high, and the vocables you could use for this rhythm could be low, high, high, low, high, high. So if you don't have the cowbell, you could just tap the quarter note and just say low, high, high, low, high, high. And that would be that basic um, rhythm called the bongo bell pattern. And I'll show you like this. I'll do it more muted. And you can get a slightly different sound with a different type of metal. Um, another rhythm that's a little more uh, complex, this is called the cascara pattern. Often the cascara is played on the side of the timbales or maybe the side of the floor tom for a drum set player. Um, it sounds like this. types of bells are the double bell, which would be the generic term. Um, the Latin percussion uh, version of that would be the agogo bell, and then the African version would be the gankogui. Uh, I don't have those double bells with me today, but I do have something else which is pretty cool. 
These are called toke, and um, I think these are Ghanaian bells. They look sort of like metal tacos. And these two happen to have two different pitches. So I'm holding these in my hand, um, keeping my palm kind of open and I can let them ring. If I dampen my fingers around there, it gets a lot drier. So I'm going to use these as my substitutes for a go-go bell and uh, gong kogwe rhythms. In this case, if you're looking on page 124, you have the first rhythm with low and high sounds in quarter notes and eighth notes. Again, what I would suggest is you always keep the beat somewhere on your body. You can just tap your leg on the quarter note and then say the low and high so you can relate that syncopated rhythm to the quarter note. So we can tap for one measure and then say the low and high in the first example. One, two, three, four. Low, low, high, high, low, low, high, 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 low, low, high, high, low, low, high, high, high. One, two, three, four. The second rhythm, a little bit more variation. I'm going to take it about this tempo. Sounds a little more appropriate for this kind of rhythm. One, two, ready, and. All right. On the next page is a picture of the gong kogui. Uh, which is, again, similar to the agogo -go bell. It's a slightly different construction. It looks like they've taken, taken two sheets of metal and sort of pressed them together for each of the bells. And uh, before we move on to the second chapter, I just thought I'd show you a couple other kinds of bells that I happen to have in my collection. Uh, this is one that you could shake with a clapper. I call this an elephant bell. So this would be maybe um, similar to the original cowbell, which probably had, which did have a clapper in it and was uh, worn around the cow's neck so you could find the cow wherever he or she was. So this is, uh, I think, a really beautiful sound. This is an elephant bell. And then I also have sleigh bells. If you are a classical percussionist uh, at Christmas time, you must always have a set of these um, to play sleigh ride, of course. So you, these come in many different formulations. This happens to be kind of a large clus cluster. These actually came originally from a leather strap that was worn on an animal. And then we also have some smaller versions that you can wear around your wrist um, and a kind of a lighter sound. All right, that's it for bells today.